Hey there, all you beautiful bastards on the internet. This is going to be another Flight Sim for a Beginner little tutorial to help some people that are brand new out. This applies to Microsoft Flight Simulator, X-Plane, any Flight Sim. We're going to go through the different landing gear configurations. This is a tricycle landing gear, which is pretty self-explanatory. More wheels in the front than the back. One in the front, two in the back. And this is a bush plane, and uh, the reason it is, because it's the only plane I have, or the th several types I have are the same plane, but it still applies regardless. We are all sitting on the runway here in Kilo Oscar Whiskey Alpha. You bring my map back up. I was having, and now I'm not connected because, uh, God damn it, um, I was having some severe issues. I had the Reality Expansion Pack on this plane. There we go. And, um,. It was causing severe issues, so we're, we're going to go into the cockpit. The first thing you do uh, before taking off, and now this will start, like it should start, like it, it's the default Cessnas, as in Microsoft Flight Sim and X-Plane or FSX, Prepare 3D, where it, you don't have to start it realistically. The problem I was having was the tie downs and stuff do not show up on these bush variants, and I was trying to take off with the pitot tube covers and everything on. But we have the thing called uh, aileron, excuse me, elevator trim right here. It's usually set to take off by default on fresh load, which this is. But you want to make sure that's set on takeoff. Our parking brake is on. You should know how to start a plane, so we're just gonna by now. We just oh, I gotta turn the battery on. There we're running. Boop boop. Owatonna Degner RGNL weather. Wind calm, oh. visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 19,000 scattered, 34,000 scattered, temperature 22, dew point minus Altimeter 2992. Altimeter 2992. Well, let's adjust that. If you're wondering what that is, that's your barometric pressure. We're going to turn off COM1. We're going to set that though, 2992, which is right there. So. <laughs> I, ha I do have pilot to ATC, so I have realistic radios. I'm surprised it didn't come up over um, uh, eight. Maybe it did. I don't know. I don't know. I might have to adjust my uh, comm settings. But here we go. We are running. I like to take off with no flaps in this plane, but we're going to do it the way we're supposed to. Put one notch in. There's three. That's one. That's two. That's full landing. We're going to go back up to one notch. What that does is it uh, lowers the flaps here. And what we want to do is we got these three main gauges right here. We got the bottom right one. That's your vertical speed. We're going to want to pay attention to that. That's if you're going up or down. The top left is your actual speed. We're going to probably rotate around to 80. And then right here, we have the RPM. You want to, when you take off, you want to make sure that you don't go into the red, basically. So we're going to release our parking brakes. And we're going to use our rudder to stay on center line and start giving it a bunch of gas. And I just happen to know on this plane, full throttle is fine. OK, we're going to watch that. And since we have one notch of flaps and we're in takeoff trim, the plane might just take off on its own. Okay, we're doing 50, 60, yep, we're at about 60, and it, it rotated on its own. Now we're going to put a little bit of Ford stick in to keep it over the runway, and I am using rudder to keep it on the runway as well, center line. And now, we're, since we're leveling off, we're not gaining any alt, uh, more speed, we can bring the flaps back. We're at a positive rate, which means we're still climbing. And now I'm going to go feed off the rudder here. and going to be adjusting trim for level flight. That's something you're going to want to learn to do. And uh, we're clearing the runway. What we're going to do is we're going to go into pattern. And this is how you practice your landings. We're going to turn left. And I'm kind of cheating. I've got a diagram up on the uh, screen. I got piled to ATC where I can see where, whoops, <laughs> I'm looking over there. Watch our vertical speed. And 
and you're just going to circle around the runway, basically. which is, there's our runway, right? That's where we took off from. And we're gonna circle around, and then we're gonna come in for a landing. But uh, first, I'm gonna show you that takeoff from the side. Okay, right, here's where we take off, and you'll just see what the plane does. Since we have one notch of flaps, it just lifted it, uh, with proper trim, it just lifted itself off the runway on its own. And then we had to apply inputs to keep it from climbing too fast. There, it just lifted right off. That's what I push forward to kind of control it a little bit, right? There we go. Now in that speed gauge, you have that first white bar. That's your safe flap range, right? You don't want to lower flaps below that. Depending on the sim, you, you might so we're just going to slow down a little bit. We're not going to get going too fast. You might uh, rip your flaps off if you have damage turned on. Still got to trim this a little bit. And the way you land uh, one of these planes is, it's really easy with a Cessna. You maintain your speed. You'll see about what speed I'm going uh, in at, probably around 60. We should have some Vassy lights, which are the lights on the runway. I'm not sure if they are active on this particular runway or not. If they're not, that sucks. They should be there, but I don't know if they are. Too red, too white uh, means your right altitude for your descent. More than that, more red than that, you're low. More white than that, you're high, right? So we're going to we're gonna get ready to turn around here. So we're going to slow down, get, get that gauge in the white, drop one notch of flaps, and that's going to make it much easier to stay once, now that I drop the flaps, I gotta give it more fuel, more throttle, and trim it. And we are going to start circling around for the uh, approach. We are on a, for a left base. Base means you're off to one side of the runway. Oops, I'm losing altitude. And the runway's off to your left. Not your to the left, but the runway's off to your left. So we're entering a left base leg here. And this is really hard to uh, do to maintain level flight. And there's the runway. Then we're going to go second notch now that we're out here, which means I got to trim it down even more. And what we want to do is we want to look at the piano keys. Yes, we do have the Vassy lights. Good. There's four white. And we're just going to go. This is a Cessna, so we're just going to go full flaps since we're so close. See, we got four white lights, which means we're high. And now you basically want to, so we throttle back, we don't want to get too slow. We do have a power antenna over there we don't want to hit. But you'll see as we get lower, some of those lights will start turning red. We're still high. I just don't want to hit that antenna there. There's a, um, whatchamacallit, a uh, thing you can hit. There we go. Okay, now they're coming in, right? And we're trimmed out pretty good. Okay, we want to wait till we get two red on the right, two white on the left. There we go. Now we start throttling up to maintain the, oh, go down, a little throw back a little bit. That's just keep, there we go, maintain that. And we got the, the, uh, the uh, those white blocks. We want to aim for them. Make sure that's in the center and those are getting bigger. Make that the center, the thing you're aiming at. Maintain this glide slope. Yeah, we're doing so. Yeah, we're doing about that. And once you get close, you'll start to see the, they'll turn red. That's fine. And then when we get about here, we throttle all the way back, pitch back slowly. Drop the wheels on the ground, and then, ta-da! <laughs> we flared to slow down the descent, and we touched the back wheels down. 
There we go. And I might have uh, throttled back a little early, I don't know, but we'll see. There we go. Yep, look at that. Sweet, almost perfect landing. And how much you throttle back, of when you throttle back, and how much you pull back will depend on, uh, we'll, take, we'll take a little bit of practice. So we're going to go into the first view and we're going to show you the uh, vertical speed gauge. Speed gauge. We're at about 400 feet per minute, which is about normal when we're landing. And when I throttle back, I try to get that just below the zero. I did it visually, but you'll watch that. See that? There it drops and then it comes up. Well, a little bit. That's if you want to land really set, really gently. You put it one. You try to maintain that that one line below the zero when you come in, but that you got to be careful, right? And then after you land, oops, <laughs> you raise your flaps. Once you once you're on a stabilized landing, you raise your flaps. So this is what you do, and that's how you land something with a tricycle landing gear, and you can just. Take off. I'm going to take off zero flaps here just to show you the difference. We're not trimmed for takeoff though either. But what you do is you just keep doing that. You keep landing and geez, we got. We should be able to pull back here in a second. No flaps. Yep. Now we're a little floating. We're barely taking off. Yep. We're oh, actually not gaining, gaining altitude. There we go. But yeah, that's what happens when you take off without flaps, and I am not trimmed properly. But you just keep doing circles. You keep doing circuits. That's what circuit is. Circuits are. You just keep doing a lap. You, it's easier to the left because you can look left and to the right. We are so close to the ground. Um, and you just keep doing that pattern until you get good at it. You can practice the tricycle landing gear uh, quite a bit. Just keep doing circuits, practicing. You'll get the hang of it before too long, especially with the Cessna. And bigger planes, different planes, it's all similar. It's all basically done the same way. It's just when you do it and how much. How much you throttle back, how quickly, when, how much pitch. But this is the real fun right here. This is the C-172 tail dragger that I worked so much on. It is uh, the same plane inside as the other one. It's just that it's a tail dragger. Bush plane. So, this is actually the, um, God, what was it? Prop Strike Studios Cessna uh, that I've completely restored. <laughs> but we're just going to do the same old thing where we fire it up a quick. Boop. Go one notch of flaps. Now this is a little difficult, a little different. I actually don't have a um, quick point on this yet, so control, oop, make sure that's right, okay. These are a little harder to do. We're not even going to turn our radios on. Everything's the same, one notch of flaps this time. But this, these planes like to get squirrely. They're very hard to steer. They get tail happy. And you need to be, whatever you're using for your yaw access, I'm using rudder pedals, uh, and, uh, you need to be on top of that. You might want to also have auto differential braking or something if you have that. Microsoft Flight Sim, um, you don't have to deal with, worry about this much. x is more realistic though, so you do. So sometimes, like I have to um, tap the right brake, tap the left brake to stay straight. But we're just gonna take off go full throttle and is my parking brake still on yes it is um, you got to really be careful with with the uh, rudder be really careful with the rudder really watch it yep see we already went to the Jesus we went to the right and then we lift it off and raise the fraps up and now you got to be careful with um, a tail dragger taking off because if you pitch forward too much, you can hit this prop on the runway. But that was a pretty decent takeoff. And we'll show you what this looks like. 
This plane, you don't really have to do, give it any forward stick to bring the tail up, and that can be a little bit dangerous for the reasons I said anyway. You do not want to hit the uh, prop on the ground. And I always tend to put a little bit of back stick in. I didn't this time, just to show you, to keep that from happening. See, it's just wanting to lift off nice and smooth. And there we go, up in the air. Raising the flaps a little earlier than I did last time. Because I noticed we weren't accelerating anymore. And then away we go. Now there are two ways to land a tricycle gear plane. The two, you can two-point it, or you can three-point it. And there's also two different ways you can technically th three-point a plane. Uh, you can touch all three wheels down at once at the same time, or you can essentially, depending on the plane, you can do this with some planes, you can't with others. You try to, you try to tap the, like this is a bush landing, right, style. You tap the, try to tap the tail wheel down on the ground right as you're hitting stall, when you still have a little bit of a stick authority, it just plop that sucker down, right? It's a variation of a three-point. But we're going to try to two-point this. I'm not that great at, I haven't flown this plane in a while. Landing with these planes is going to be very difficult. Anything with the tail wheel is going to be a royal pain in the ass to land in a simulator that simulates ground loops, side loading and stuff. Microsoft Flight Sim doesn't really do that. That's why you're seeing these people uh, land like Piper Cubs in football fields and stuff because it just, it holds your hand that way. X-Plane does not. So you might see me screw this up a little bit. Trimming is a little bit difficult to explain if you don't know how it works. You throttle back, you gotta trim up. You don't have to, but it just means you don't have to hold the stick as much. I probably shouldn't have trimmed there. I should have trimmed after I uh, put the flaps down. Trying to maintain uh, level flight. We're, we're going to be a little high, so we're going to circle around. And the trick to two-point, which is land the two wheels on, down on the ground, then slowly drop the tail wheel down. Uh, you have to land very slowly. That vertical speed gauge we're speaking of, you want that just a notch below zero. And three point, two point landings with tail draggers tend to be long landings. Not always, depending on your landing speed, but I'm just going to go full flaps now, which I probably shouldn't have, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, so we're going to come in. Because if you land too fast, or at too sharp of an angle, you'll bounce because remember with the tricycle gear, those back wheels are hitting and then the nose naturally wants to come down. Well, when the, when the front wheels hit too hard with this plane, the back wheel is going to want to come down and it's going to make us want to take off again. So we got to really watch it. And you tend to two-point land at a slightly faster speed than two-pointing. Two point a three-point landing is um, kind of like with the other plane. It's just a little more aggressive, so to basically. We're going to try to do a uh, regular two-point landing first, and then we're going to go around again and try to do a three-point. So we come in we're obviously we're high I always come in a little high at this airport because that crap on the other side of the runway I just don't trust it plus I'm used to bush flying which tends to require me to uh, come in high okay yeah see we're, we've had four whites this whole time but we should be okay All right, watch that vertical speed and airspeed. Okay, I'm not throttling back. I'm pulling back to keep that there. I'm off center, and now I'm slowly going to bounce a little bit. There we go. Maintain stick pressure so it doesn't lean forward, and then slowly pull back the throttle. There's the back tail wheel hitting. Ah! Different. Oh. Jesus! 
There we go. Really fighting that to keep it straight. And then flaps up. Oh, shit. And then stopping, stopping with a uh, trike plane. Jesus, come on. It's careful. you got to be careful. You don't want to slam on the brakes. You'll flip it over and hit the uh, pedal on it. the uh, rudder. Excuse me, Jesus. This The uh, propeller, the prop on the runway. See, that's how uh, stressful that was. That takes a lot of practice. How far? How, see, look how far down the runway we are this time. We'll have, we'll have enough to take off again. But let's show you that now. Now this is much harder to do. You need to be constantly on the controls. I was I was pulling uh, back gently. I was putting inputs in gently into the stick the whole time. Trying to maintain that level flight, right? Until I, that levelness right here, watch. Nice and slow. You got a little bounce. Constant stick pressure, wherever it needs to go, you need to really feel the plane. Throttle back, and then there goes the tail, the tail wheel down. And it's wanting to, I was giving it a little bit too much rudder. I'm used to flying the Beaver, which requires a little bit more of an aggressive feel. You don't have to be as an aggressive with this plane, and that's what that was about. And you'll see when I hit the brakes, the tail wheel, I think, comes off the ground for a second. It wants to come up. Well, see, if you hit the brakes too hard there, you'll flip over. So you've got to really watch it. Okay, we're going to do a, uh, what I like to refer to as a, are we still full flat? Oh, we're in replay still. Okay, what, we're going to need to do what I like to prefer as a bush take, short field bush takeoff. Don't try this until you're better at it. Full flaps, brakes on. Actually, that's the set trim. Uh, if I, yeah. I can, yeah, see that? I forgot to set trim. If I, if I could have screwed that up. Yeah, that much forward trim, I might have, might have prop struck. So there we go, bring that down. Okay, now let's do this. Gotta be really careful, because I'm holding the brakes, you can easily flip it over and put this prop into the ground. plane doesn't have the power. I was trying to lift the tail off the ground <laughs> while sitting still. Some more powerful bush planes can do that. And we are off the ground at like 30, not 20 knots, 30 knots. Look at that. Then we start and we maintain level flight, start backing the flaps off. This is a, you saw how fast we took off, right? Yeah. There we go. I only did that because we didn't have much runway left. And that's a bush takeoff. Short field bush takeoff. You, you now, if you're at really high altitude, you might not want to have take off with full flaps because you might not. You might want to raise the flaps a little bit. Like that's only if you're like taking off and you barely have any room to take off. But this next landing is basically kind of a bush landing. And it's the way a lot of people land while they're learning to fly tail draggers and flight sims as well. Because it's so similar to the um, easy tricycle landing gear way of landing. It'll trim this out a little bit. And this is a little different. And I wish you could see my throttle inputs. But I didn't let off the throttle until I was level. And then I maintained level flight not uh, and then I slowly backed I can I s tried to keep that line that's go way too high right now we're getting way too much altitude that vertical speed uh, gauge a notch below zero with the throttle right and then once once I touched I left the throttle there and then I slowly I need to readjust my um, yeah there we go I keep, yeah, I keep wanting to pitch up too much. Throttle back. Then come around again. And then once I was stable, I gently rolled off the, um, and I was wandering, so we're going to have to get a little, 
going to do a pretty tight turn here. There we are. And we're going to be high again, which is, this is going to be like a bush landing, right? And uh, this is also how you have to land warbirds. This is how you have to land like a P-51 or some shit in DCS. Okay, still, still trimming it out. There we go. And uh, you kind of want to come in at it. This is more of a slower speed. You want to get in there. <coughs> Try to land it like a, or, you know how they land the remote control airplanes? <coughs> they come and they kind of tip it way back and plop it down. That's what we're doing here. This isn't a super short field. Short field is they're very like where you stall it and you throttle it at the last second. We're not going to do that. That's very difficult, and that's something you have to learn on your own. And it's something I'm still getting. I'm still learning to do properly. But we're aiming. We're not really watching our speed too much. It's in a good spot. We're aiming for those squares. And you have to have a good idea of how high off the ground you are, right? So we're going to come in. There we go. And I fucked it up. <laughs> and then we're probably going to loop. Look at this. Yeah, see? And there we go. Whee! <laughs> see, that's hard. I screwed it up. I'm not particularly used to this plane. And I, uh, I don't hardly fly this plane. Let's see how bad I did it. Well, I got it, it's just that I bounced, and then I got loose, <laughs> and spun out. It's very difficult to learn, the, 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 the three wheel, the, tri the uh, th three point landing is very difficult to learn. But the trick is, get in there, don't gain altitude like I did. Zero it. Don't. Don't. And I bounced. But you get the idea. I did it a little too soon because I'm not particularly proficient with this particular aircraft. I'm trying to come to a stop. Raise the flaps. But this isn't, this is more, this isn't starting out, right? This is what you're, you're not going to be doing this when you're learning. I did it a little too soon. And you learn it after a while. But if you ever want to like do short field bush landings, you're going to need to learn this. You need to learn to come in hot. Throttle it. Oops. See, I gained altitude. That's where I screwed up. I got a little too slow. But you get the idea. I'm not going to bore you too much with me practicing or I can do it well on this plane. This Cessna isn't really designed to be flown that way. But trying to land that way, if I would have done it a little bit later, it would have worked. But you see how much shorter the landing is when you do that. You'll practice. I need to do it lower to the ground than I was because I got a little too slow and bounced. But that's the difference. That's the three point. You, you land it like it's a tricycle landing gear, but it's very difficult to do. And now for the really interesting one. <laughs> seaplanes. You got seaplanes with these wheels and some don't. This one does, however. And you have the rudders on the back. We're going to do a quick takeoff and landing on land because this is a little combination between the two. You have to land it like a tricycle plane you need to get those back wheels to touch first, but you can't flare much. 
it's a combination between like a two point and a three point landing on a uh, tail dragger, but it's not a tail dragger. It's really weird to be honest. And there should be a water rudder, which is right here, I believe. Shift four. No, shift four, come on. Okay, those, yeah, those are up. And uh, those are down. Okay, yeah, that's how you steer in the water. I just needed to make sure. So we want these up, have that back. We are in takeoff trim. Let's just start the thing. Give it one notch of flaps. Release the parking brake. Taking off uh, is similar. You don't have to use the rudder too much with these. You can steer with the rudder. You can steer with differential braking. But you want to be gentle with the pullback. You don't want to smack the back of your props. We're at one notch, so it should take off. But it's going to be a... Yep, there we go. But it's also a heavier plane, so it's going to feel heavier than what you're used to. And then uh, gear up. Because we had a positive rate. But you always want to make sure, confirm that positive rate. Confirm you're climbing out and you're, you're maintaining speed and all that before you ever raise landing gear on a plane with landing gear. It, retractable gear. You'll see this. There, just lifts right off. Don't want to jerk it back. You gotta, this plane's a little harder, it's a little heavier, you gotta kind of watch it. I realized I'm climbing out good, and then we put the gear in. Now we circle around. A note, it's really easy to forget to have your gear in the proper position with float planes, with gear. It's really easy to accidentally land with your gear up on, on, on a runway. You need to remember you have gear on this thing, right? Gear does not produce much drag, so we're probably just gonna. We could put the gear down right now on this airplane with pontoon planes. Uh, this is not real weather. Uh, re real weather. Uh, we're, this is an airport near where I live, but it is real time, and I'm looking. The sun's. It's 3:23 p.m. my time, and the sun's gonna go down in game around the time it's gonna go down in real life. It, so, and it's winter. The sun goes down about five o'clock. So you can see that's being represented in the uh, simulator. And you always want the water rudders up when taking off a landing, regardless if you're on land or water. But when you're landing on a runway, you just want them up all the time. Before I forget, I'm gonna drop the landing gear. Look for the four green. Another thing, I've never done it in the simulator, but in real life, it's very dangerous to land on rudder, water, excuse me, with your gear out because you'll flip it you can die. I haven't tested that in the flight sim though. But we want to land this like we landed the tricycle landing gear plane. It's keep main, with Maintain that throttle to keep that like a notch below the zero. But we want to be in a slightly pitched back attitude to ensure that those back wheels touch first don't want to chop the throttle and we're coming in at a very yes I know a very sharp leg here but we got a long runway to work with you come in here we go 
doing a little more advanced approach here. And these are just basics. And we're going to land long, most likely. But it doesn't really matter. I'm not on center like I should be. But this is more. Okay. Maintain. Oh. That wasn't a good landing. Okay. I haven't flown this plane in years. That's why I screwed it up. Generally, you want to touch the back wheels first. Which I think I four pointed it. Yeah, I did. A little throttle. Got to remember you're higher off the ground, right? There we go. Really hear those how, way, the way those tires sound different, can't you? And I believe that was good. So let's uh, lean it out. And... That's how you shut it off. You pull the lean out. And you go boop boop. Fuel cut off. Boop. But let's see that from the S side. The danger is to flare too much. You got to be really careful. Just a little bit back from level. There we go. That's how you do it. Okay, now for the real fun. And we're still in real time, but we're at Fort Hood, Alaska. Uh, at the you know the, the sea base outside Anchorage so I'm surprised the sun's still up being winter time but okay let's the water rudders are down we're trimmed it's fired up and the parking brake oops on this plane uh, acts as an anchor so you don't move around that's not a real thing I don't believe but what are you gonna do? Okay, I'm looking at my map. I got a little nav map going. We should be able to... Oh yeah, we are just spinning like crazy. Okay, here we go. Let's get rid of our anchor. We got the rotor runners down. Okay, we're facing the right way. And this is a little tricky. If you wanna get moving, put a notch of flaps in. Just enough to where you can steer with your rudder, but not your water rudders, right? So let's bring the uh, water rudders, come on, out, get rid of them. Okay, water rudders are up. And now we want to pull full back on the stick, gently apply throttle. It's called getting up on the step. So you don't, uh... there we go. You'll feel it bob up. There you go, hold half stick, and then we go full throttle. You don't want to pull back too crazy, but you want to keep the uh, nose up. There we go, it's just so it skips off the water, and then you full throttle it and take off. And there we are. And since we're going to be, oops, re-landing on the water, we're coming the other direction. We don't have to worry about our gear because, well, they, it stays up, right? Landing on water is a pain in the ass because if it's calm, uh, it's really hard to see where the water level is. You can't really see where, when you're going to touch down, right? That uh, getting up on the step thing, I don't know is necessary in the simulator. But you want to make sure that when you, th you counteract the, the, the plane wanting to nose it down when you throttle it, and you want to get your speed up gradually, you kind of get like half throttle, half speed, 
to where you're, you're kind of tipped back so it lifts out of the water and is skimming across the top of the water. And once that's what getting on the step means. And then once uh, you're there, constantly maintaining slight back pressure on the stick, then you can th really throttle it and. Oops. Oh, I am just screwing this up to all hell now. And then you can take off. But our rudder rudder should still be up. Yes. You don't want to take off or land. Do I have the experimental flight model on? But you don't want to take off or land with the rudder rudders down because that gives you too much control at speed and you can screw yourself pretty good. I like the fog around the mountains. I got it set to summertime. I don't know what the temperature is. <laughs> I got snow turned off. I didn't check. I didn't check that when I um, reloaded. Okay, we got to land, line up with this water strip over here. Let's go full flaps. I could just land in the inlet, but yeah, there we go. That's actually Anchorage International to our left. Those, well, not there. Those two runways, but way over there is Inter Anchorage International. Those are the two runways the Fort Hood airplanes land at. So we're going to come down. We're going to clear those power poles, and you see these two, that line. You got that. You got a dirt strip off to our right, somewhere. But you got that island right there. It kind of gives us an idea. You want to come over, and basically, we just want to land gently, but keep the note, the tips of our pontoons from digging into the water. So we need to um, land with, in a nose-up attitude, but nose, but land fairly gently. Yep, the dirt uh, strips or the is off to our right. Actually, that might be Anchorage International over there. I think it is. Yep, there's the buoys. Land between the buoys. We got to be getting close, so we. Uh, Got to throttle it, throttle it. Tip back and control our descent with the throttle. Up. Oh. All right, we're touching in. Keep the back pressure and let off the uh, throttle. Keep the back pressure. Back off the throttle. And then we can kind of sink down in. And then we... Uh, lower our water our, our actual rudders now that we're going slow and we can taxi to our heart's content up oh, raise the flaps taxiing the landing with float plane taxiing and parking with float planes is a whole nother thing <laughs> and I just realized I never showed the takeoff so we'll show the takeoff right before the land there is a bit of a replay glitch uh, with float planes where um, I believe they show the water rudders down all the time or the last position all the time so they're going to look like they're down. There we are getting ready to take off. It is showing the water displacement. This is the experimental flight model so water landing is better, more realistic. There, I'm holding back. I'm getting, getting fast enough that I can raise the uh, water rudders. That's where I got rudder authority. Air, air rudder on the tail. There we are. I pull back. You can see me pulling back. Gently up. I don't know if it gets on the step, if it raises up out of the water in, in the sim, but it, in real life you have to do that. There we are. It starts to bounce. Kind of, yep, there we go. It's doing it. There we are, we're on the step. There we are, I throttled up and we're off. 
Oh, I love the reflection of the plane on the water. Did you see that? Oh, that's cool. Yep, and the water rudders are showing down the hallway. And here's the landing. The water rudders should be up. They're just down because the replay can't control that for some reason. Pull it back and see how slow we're going. Maintaining, keeping the pitch, maintaining the throttle, maintaining the throttle, and then jet up, jet kind of tapped, holding it back gently in, skimming across, sl keeping that back pressure, slowly backing off the throttle, and we drop down in the water. There we go. And that's how you land in water. And then now I'm in water rudders. Well, I dropped the anchor while we were still moving, which basically means parking brake, which, you know, it's, it's just for the sim. But, yo, oh, look at it wobble. But that's basically the three types of landing gear, so to speak, and how they work. I'll probably do a more detailed, like, getting better at landings with a regular tricycle plane. Probably won't be the Cessna, but it'll be something else eventually. But I've just been wanting to do this for a little while, show off the little bush planes and show, tell, talk about the three different ways of landing. The, uh, the two different ways of the trike gear, which I just could not seem to get the three point down with that plane, but you get the idea. Tricycle and then pontoons just at the end for the fun of it. And look at that thing just wobble like crazy. They still they haven't gotten water physics down quite perfect yet. <laughs> but as the plane waves goodbye to everybody, I hope you all have a nice uh, late winter. And uh, I'll see you guys on the flip side. Fly safe, everybody.